Hey, 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 welcome to the PACT pod. How crazy, man. 2022, Dom, how you doing, buddy? Hanging in there, Eric, hanging in there. Welcome to 2022. It has been a wild roller coaster of a couple weeks. How you doing? I'm doing well. You know, I appreciate you holding down the fort. Our regular viewers may have seen you uh, running the solo ship in December to close out 2021 as the, the Verno family were, you know, taking their spin with COVID and, and doing well now, so... I appreciate that. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. It's my family went through that last week and this week. Knock on wood, I've been hanging tough, but wife and daughter had some issues, so we're coming out of that stretch ourselves. Yep, yep. And you know, it, it you know, all over places, you know, our students are dealing with it, teachers dealing with it, and you know, you're just rolling the best you can, thinking, you know, hoping you're doing the best you can for your family, for everybody, and and it's good stuff. But man, 2022, a lot to look forward to. What do you think? Oh, definitely. Definitely. Um, lots going on already. We have a, a lot coming up quite, uh, quickly here in the near future. It's two weeks. It's honest, isn't it? The time is, See, we're only not even quite end of January, but time's flying. It really is. But, you know, speaking of time and nearing up, and I think it's time we kick something off. What do you think? I think we should get going, get this get this show on the road, get it over the airwaves, the internet. Here we go, coming at you through the interwebs. Oh man, that, that intro gets me fired up. I don't know about you, I love that stuff. I love that intro. Wow, it's great. So welcome to the January edition of the PACT pod. I believe this is episode seven. I believe so. Yeah, a lot of good stuff been going on. So so what's going on in the, the tech world of Dom Salvucci? Um, it's kind of getting through things. We had a – we'll get into it when we talk about some of the past events going on. We had a regional event, Tretzi, uh, this past Monday. I had to attend virtually because of the Snowmageddon 2022. <laughs> um, Took me a while to dig out, and even then, once I dug out, the roads weren't ready, and the snow crews did a great job. But we had over about right close to a foot of snow in my okay. neighborhood, and I kept watching the cameras on the interstate that uh, five one one. Yeah, uh, and I kept looking. I'm like, yeah, I made the right choice of staying home because the interstates were covered, and they said stay home, don't get on the roads. I'm like, I'll stay home, ten virtually. Yeah. Um, between that, getting stuff ready for. This and uh, getting stuff prepped whenever I am going to be out of the district for an upcoming event early in February. Pete and C. Oh, Got man. Pete and C 2022, you say, huh? Yes. Getting my, my tech tools lined up so whenever I'm out of the district, my kids can continue learning and be ready to go, ready to roll. Well, you know, I, guess, right. I guess that's why we today's episode is called Prepping for Pete. Because Pete and C is going to be a big part of it. But uh, I think we got a message that we got to give before we get things rolling. What do you think, Yes, Tom? Definite message. I'd like to give a giant P-A-E-C-T happy birthday to one and only Ann Noonan. Yes. And many of you recognize we had her on two pods ago to really go over um, all of our presenters and our keynoters that we had in, uh, coming up for Pete. So she does an awesome job for PACT, she's currently our parliamentarian and uh, a past president, and, uh, you know, she does a lot of great things in ed tech. It's awesome. Yes. Well, happy birthday. Happy birthday, Ann. But, you know, not only do we have special announcements to make, but we also have special guests today, right? Yes. We're going to bring coming, in. Coming to the stage, who do we have? Corey Freed, our Southeast Regional Director. And she's also, she's not coming on as Regional Director tonight. She's coming on. For Pete and C, we have, PACT has a meet and greet coming up that Sunday. So she is on the committee to help organize that. She's going to come on and tell us about the events for PACT that Sunday. All right. Well, uh, she's probably enjoying those invisible green M&Ms in the green room. We'll bring her in. Hey, Corey, how you doing? I'm good. You know, I got to just tell you, if I had known we were going to be using our Pete and C coffee mugs from, like, I think that was 2017. But I have that mug. I just actually did my dishes this morning, so it's clean. I should have had a fresh cup of coffee tonight. Uh, I was going to go with hot chocolate in this, but then I figured Ooh. I'd be up all night. 
So I'm just going with the Zenti. Oh, you have the green one. I got the blue one that year because they had two different color mugs. Yes. But hi, yeah. everyone. Uh, this is my first time on the podcast, so um, well, bear with me. I am not as uh, fancy as my my fellow co-regional directors who both have the nice wind covers on fancy microphones. Um, I, I might have to up my game. I finally got a ring light, though. So that, that's not it's not that we're fancy. It's just no. we're louder. Yes, <laughs> we need protection from <laughs> popping the mud. All right. So we got, got meet point. and greet. So I came on today to talk about the, the PAEC team meet and greet because you know, Pete and C is this great conference. It is an amazing time, but we're still only a small part of it. So PAECT is just one of the, I believe there are three organizations that co-sponsor Pete, four, Dom is correcting me, four organizations. So we want to do something that's specific for our members. And we feel like the meet and greet is such a great opportunity because you don't always know the people who live on the other side of the state. And this is going to give you that opportunity to meet each other, find, you know, find your tribe, find people who have a common thread with you. And what we are going to do this year, and like Dom already mentioned, so before I forget this, it is going to be Sunday night. However, we are not positive about time and location at this point. So I was told by our committee chair to just mess, remind you all to follow us on social media. There are, every region has a, has a Twitter account. PAECT has a Twitter account and we will definitely be tagging it and hashtagging it. And I sound like an idiot as I say tagging and hashtagging. I do actually know what I'm talking about, I promise. So, um, but we're going to let you know the time and day. It'll definitely be after KTI um, Precon. If you haven't signed up for that yet, uh, KTI Precon is an amazing event. If you're going to be coming up to Hershey the day early, you know, sign up for that. It is a lot of fun. And it's, again, a place to meet your friends, meet meet teachers from the other side of the state, all of that. And so you don't have to, oh, sorry, Corey, you oh. don't have to be registered for Pete to come to the KTI Precon, correct? That I don't know. I think that would be an Eric question. No, I'm pretty sure. You're, yeah, you're, you're good. Precon, you can, you can just go to the Precon. You are correct. All right. Um, so what I want to tell you about the meet and greet, though, because, you know, KTI and PAECT, there's one thing we love, and that's prizes. So for the meet and greet, we are going to be having three prizes, and I'm going to tell you today how you win those prizes so that you guys who are watching this have a little bit of a sneak preview. So we're going to be doing a scavenger hunt to find 10 of the board members. So that would be Dom. Eric, myself, and then obviously there's 10 people. So you have seven others that you don't necessarily see their feces right now. Each one of those 10 board members is going to have a different color marker to mark your playing card. And when your card is marked by all 10 board members, you can put it in for a raffle prize. There are going to be three raffle prizes. Two of the prizes are your favorite baskets of chocolate. They are going to be decked out Hershey gift baskets. You know, it might, I don't know exactly what Hershey, it could be Reese's, but we're going to be having two gift baskets full of chocolate. And then the third prize is going to be a lottery tree. I will just point out if you win the lottery tree, remember when you're shopping on Amazon to use Amazon Smiles so that PAECT gets a kickback from all of those Amazon purchases. But the third prize is that lottery ticket. At, or lottery tickets. It's going to be a tree of multiple tickets. But we're really excited. We can't wait to meet everyone. And we hope that you all join us and have a lot of fun. And we're going to give you a special offer. If you come up to one of the three of us during the meet and greet, and you mention the PAECT pod, we'll help point out the other seven members of the board. If you don't mention PACT pod, you're on your own. Well, that might be hard. Well, for we you, will help you out if you mention PACT pod. I don't know how to know. That's going to be that, hard. But then again, listen, we're, they haven't watched. We're, they won't know. We're building the ship as it's flying, but Dom, we got to be a little. We got to be a little. Like if you come up to us, mention PACT pod. Okay, that gets you one person. But like if you show us like you're you're listening on audio podcast, that that'll get you too. You know if you. If you've liked one of our videos on YouTube, that'll get you a third person. I mean, we gotta we gotta sauce it up a little bit. We can't just 
We can just roll out us. seven just for saying hi. Subscribe to us. Mention PACT Pod. Follow us on Anchor or wherever you get your fine podcasts. Follow us on YouTube. Subscribe. We'll hook you up. Yep. Yeah. Definitely. Listen, I got everybody in my family like forcing them to listen to this. Like we're gonna you know, PAC, Hopefully the PACT members are too. You know. So yeah, that's awesome. I don't think you have to force anyone though. You two are really entertaining. I, I mean. Think- I, I, I just enjoy I agree with everything the two of you say, remember? No, that's it. We have audio proof. Yep. All right, well, you know, and what's uh when you were talking there, I was thinking, hmm, let me pull up uh some info here that might help. So as you were talking about uh information here, I'm like, oh on the website, let's see the full stream right here. Mm-hmm. All right, so when you're on Pete and C dot org you can go up here to schedule uh, and then on the side here you can click on they have the schedule but what we were talking about is the sunday workshop time now meet and greet's yes. not going to be listed but sunday's a very full day it's an unofficial day at pc and, uh, and there's still time to sign up for different items okay if you're in the schoology uh canvas now for some of these you will have to pay you will have to be going to the event we do have a kti event so Meet and greet PACT is going to be after this, but a KTI yes. event. We talked about it earlier, but just just in case you were wondering, if you hear people talking about the different things like Ed Puzzles and different programs that are there, fostering creativity, problem solvers for storytelling. So there's a lot of awesome events that don't just happen, you know, Monday through Wednesday. There's a lot that goes on on that Sunday before. So thank you so much for bringing that to our attention. I appreciate you coming on. I know you're a part of the committee that's working with um, setting up, you know, the meet grade. I think it's really important for members and even prospect members to meet a lot of the members of the board. Um, they do a lot of work in the back end, and I think it's, you know, it's beneficial to have that, you know, for some people they might need that nudge and, you know, maybe, you know, doing doing the task and finding those people. It's, you know, getting the information, that competitive edge comes out and might break down their maybe nervous just to come up and chat with us or whatever. But I love the fact that uh, the group got together and, um, you know, you guys worked on building this out. I'm, I'm really excited to see how this goes and what everybody thinks on Sunday. So thank you so much, Corey. Yeah, and I'm really excited to see everyone. You know, it's been, what, two, two three years since we've all been able to gather together. So it, yeah. it's going to be a great, it's going to be an epic event. Yeah, no, that's awesome. All right. Well, we thank you so much for your time and we're going to send you back into the, uh, you know, the green room. And even though we don't have good, uh, you know, too many. I'm going to go find those green M&Ms you were talking about. Maybe I have some uh, in the other room here. Uh, I think Benny may have grabbed them already. (laughs) Uh, No, he actually got a bag of biscuits. This is what's been keeping him quiet. All right. Well, thank you so much. And uh, Thanks, if I don't see you sooner, we'll see you. See you at Pete. 2022. I'll see you in Pete. And if anyone is going to be at FETC, I'll see you in Orlando next week. Well, there we go. And right, Benny says care. hi. Take care. See ya. Yeah. So Sunday is there's a lot going on at P and C, um, 2022. Registration for attendees opens up from 11:30 a.m. to 5 p.m. If I'm reading the schedule correctly, the Sunday workshops go till four o'clock. I'm in. Tr- I'm one of the people in charge of the Sunday sessions. Um, that is a vendor hospitality. It goes from six to eight p.m. There are uh, rooms down by Empire and a couple of the Cocoa rooms. We're going to have about six vendors that are hosting events in those rooms. So please check that out. So the uh, PACT meet and greet will be happening sometime between four and six. We try and set everything up so events don't overlap with each other and kind of poach people from event to event or or make people have to choose between events. So Sunday's... um, Workshops go to four, sometime between four and six. We'll have the meet and greet. Check PACT on uh, at PACT on Twitter or the regional accounts. We'll be posting that information. The uh, vendor hospitality is from six to eight. And then from eight to 11 is the big welcome reception where badges are required. Um, That's big. Making sure yeah. they know. Yep. So Sunday is a full day. It's the unofficial start to the conference. And, it yeah, and it, oh, go ahead. And you've been doing a great job with that and the things that you work on. And that's it, it's really a, a great time to you know really go out and see the vendors. They're not on the floor. 
it's kind of, you know, kicked back, laid back, you know, going to see them and, and even just get together with friends and people you haven't seen in forever. You know, it's a really nice time to catch up. Yeah. And the other so, cool thing about that night is, you know, you're not having a lesson plan. You already took care of your sub plans. You're there. You know, you don't have to worry about, you know, making copies or, you know, getting things together. It's all, it's already done. So, yeah, it's exciting. Yeah, it's it's going to be a good a good conference. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. And speaking of which, as we have the PACT meet and greet on Sunday, would you like to tell them about our little special meetups in the morning, the morning meetups during the conference? Yeah, you're you're uh, going to have to make sure you're checking your your emails and, and checking the social media. But um, the different regional directors, we have seven regional directors for PACT. <laughs> Uh, we'll all uh, be hosting morning sessions. Um, you know, one great thing about getting up in the morning at Hershey is you go down, they have uh, great coffee, even better hot chocolate at the ready right outside the, uh, the main um, morning session, the keynote session. And the PACT booth is right in that vicinity. From our booth, we can see the doors where everybody's going into the keynote. So we're going to have sessions where we get together just to say hi, get to know people, if you're new to the organization, it's a great time. You had the meet and greet, and you got to see the people there. Now you want to see more PACT members that are at the event. Uh, so we'll be having a Monday, Tuesday, and I believe a Wednesday morning. Yes. Um, and then there'll be different things your different regional directors will have. We have some different um, PACT bags. If you're a member, there's things you can get there. And, and as long as we're talking about that, you can also, during the conference, visit the booth that's going to be right there and um, for – you know, double checking that you're a premium member or signing up to be a premium member for $35. We have uh, a different thing that you will receive right there, something that's been picked yeah. out for you. We'll have um, some giveaways. Then, we'll yeah, have some a bunch of giveaways. Raffle items to raffle. Um, mm-hmm. Your lot goes on at the booth. Stop by the booth. We're right across from the registration. As you're registering, if you turn all the way around, you'll see us. So we'll be right there. Check us out. There's a lot that goes on at the booth. We have the coffee or the hot chocolate meetups in the morning. It's right, like Eric said, right by the keynote. Um, we'll have some raffles. We'll have some giveaways. Stop in and say hi. We are running a goose chase, correct? Oh, what would a PACT event be without goose chase, Tom? So I'm fairly <laughs> certain the booth will be involved in the goose chase. I do believe. So, yeah, there's going to be some exciting stuff. Uh, goose goose chase play will be occurring, you know, doing different events, different things, you know, stopping by, talking to different vendors. Um, you know, you might want to even bookmark some of the vendors that might pop across, you know, the bottom of our screen. And if they're there and present, you might want to go stop by and check them out and ask them questions because they may be part of the goose chase as well. It's really an exciting time. All right, so that's awesome. So meet and greet, a lot of really good stuff going on. And uh, so looking at getting ready yep. for Pete and C. Oh, what's that, Tom? What? Something else. We're missing something, but it's going on one of the evenings at Pete. And I uh-huh. can't quite remember what it is in my old age. Hmm. Something important, though. Hey, you know, there's a lot of, lot, of, lot of really important evenings at Pete and C, Dom. I don't know. Monday? Monday together. Is it Monday? Yeah, what, what, do you, what do you think we're doing Monday? PACT dinner. <laughs> I probably don't want to be late to that. <laughs> oh, yeah, is, now is, that, is that included in our reg- registration? No, that is extra. You have That's to right. go on, even if you're a presenter. Even if you're a presenter, um, you have to go on to PeteandC.org and register for the PACT dinner. It's a good dinner. We have a meeting. We have awards. Um, the corporate sponsors are there. You can see the people that help support PACT.org and make all of this possible. Um, not just this as in the PACT pod, but PACT itself. Um, those guys help make this organization into the organization. Get, you know, meet your needs and get you connected and, and provide activities for everybody in the state and outside of the state. So we have that going on. Uh, there's some awards that are be given at the dinner. And you can see, you know, the members and kind of commiserate. I don't want to say commiserate. I don't think that's the right word, but 
Got to hang out and enjoy company of the other members. Yeah. And, you know, one of the things I know, uh, you know, we'll talk about some anxiety. You know, as you go in, there's no safe seats. You know, get with some friends and you're going to sit around, meet some new friends. It's, you know, we're all PACT members that are at the event. Great food. I'm hoping. I know, you know, different things have happened. Our world is just not the same world it, it, it uh, you know, it was yesterday. But in years past, Dom, they've had a very special dessert. And I'm really hoping we have it this year. Oh, yeah. That dessert. The infamous, the infamous Hershey's peanut butter pie. The peanut Save butter your calories. Pie. Save your carbs because you're going to blow past them. But, oh, it's so worth it. So I'm really hoping. And I know based on our last pod, there was a lot of talk about that peanut butter pie. So hopefully they have that ready to go. And, you know, as, as we're even talking about it, because uh, the Hershey, the organization, you know, the whole program working with, you know, the different, the, the, the whole facilities, the restaurants, all that, you know, when you're at Pete and C, you know, do as to under, there's, as you have them do unto you, you know, be kind. They're working under, yeah. you know, uh, strenuating circumstances and their numbers and different things. So, you know, as you're, you're, you're moving about, if things are, you know, kind of off a little bit, you know, just, you don't know what exactly is going on. Um, you want to make sure that, you know, you're just putting your best foot forward and, you know, try to put yourself in their place. And yeah. they're really doing the best they can. I'm so excited we're going to be in person this year. So I know. I'm excited. Last time I hung out with everybody was uh, Pete and C 2020 in Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. And I, I know this isn't going to be like Pete and C 2019, last time we were in Hershey, because that was pre-pandemic and every, it was a very different world, like you're saying. Um, you know, lots been going on since then, but I'm looking forward to it. Seeing everyone, you know, that I haven't seen in a number of years, getting together with people. It is going to be um, safe. You know, we're, we're taking as many safety precautions as we can for the conference. So, you know, we're, we're gearing up for everything and we're going to do what we can to keep people safe. It's going to be good to see people. And, you know, it might not be what we remember, but it's still going to be good. Oh, yeah. Most definitely. So, Normally, about this part of the show, we would talk about tech notes. We would talk about an app we're using in our classroom or something we've heard about that we're looking to try, we're excited for. But we're going to take a little different approach this week. What do you think, Tom? Uh, I'll do this a little different because whether you're an experienced conference goer or you're a newbie, you know, it's been a while since we've been at conferences. It's always good to refresh. What do you need to take to Pete and C or any conference for that matter? Almost like a conference survival 101 kind of a deal. Yes. I remember going way back in 2007, my first Pete and C, and I go in, I sit down, and my head was just spinning, you know, listening to the keynote. Back then, we had the paper book trying to flip through the catalog and see what was there today, and I starred some things. Um, and I know I, 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 I sat down and little, I, I didn't realize that when I was starring things, I was starring Tuesday when I'm sitting there on a Monday. And I'm like, Where'd all the stars go? And I'm panicking, like, oh, keynote's ending. I got to roll. So so what What are some different tools, tech techniques, tips? What do you got for us, Tom? Well, what are your, uh, you know, PNC survival tips? What's in your tech bag? All of that rolled into one. I am going to go old, old school, even though laptops and tablets have much better battery life than they did back in the day. I always well, I found if you carry a power strip, Seats magically open that were once taken. Um, <laughs> you got to sit down. Oh, the seat's taken. I have a power strip because at some point in time, people's batteries and their computers and, and tablets run low. They'll let you plug in and share the power. Um, so that's something I always carry, even though, you know, with laptops nowadays, they last fairly long. You never know when something's going to happen. When you break so, out that power strip, is it like Lion King when they're presenting Simba? Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The sun shines, even if it's raining. The heavens part. All yes. Right? I love that. That's great. Old school. There's no school like the old school. I like that yes. power strip. All right. Yep. What do you bring? What's your, what's one thing you want to share? You know, it's, it's old school, but yet with a new flair. Um, one of my go-tos, I got my old little leather notebook. You know, I'm a tech guy, but, you know, I love my calligraphy. I love my fountain pen. So I've got my paper. So I like to do my fountain pen writing on it. But this is, you know, not just ordinary paper here, Dom. Down here in the corner, I don't know if we can get it 
You can see a little QR code there. Yes. So this is actually a Rocketbook notebook. So I know Rocketbook was, uh, they did a, we were um, promoting them heavily at KTI. We gave all of our um, attendees, you know, Rocketbooks last year. And um, there's a lot of really cool stuff. So I love having paper copy, even though I'm really tech centric. I love it. And not only do they have the paper, but they also have their books, multiple sizes, multiple colors. Um, and what's really cool is when you have it, you can set it up on the inside that when I'm done taking notes, they have some icons at the bottom of the paper. And so next to that QR code, it was hard to see it. Those icons are actually on the bottom of the paper. And you can say like, this one's going to go to my Gmail. Um, this is automatically going to dump into my drive, Dropbox, OneDrive. You know, it's going to kick over to, to OneNote. There's a lot of different um, areas that it can go to. You're always going to have the paper copy, but then it'll digitally kick it to there so you could look at it later. Um, and then the cool thing is when you're done, you could just wipe the ink away. All right, it's erasable ink. They use friction pens on these, and they have a little cloth that you just wipe it all away, or um, you can use the eraser on the other side of the pen. So it's reusable. So yeah. they, they'd say it's the last notebook you'll ever have. What were we gonna say, Dom? That's kind of like the 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 bridge between eras, because you have the best of both worlds. You get the writing. Now, the paper one you have, you can use your fountain pen on. I have that one too. That paper is not reusable if you Correct. use the fountain pen. But then they have one you put in the microwave. That's the the wave. That's one of the yep. first oh. editions. And then they have. I didn't dig that one. out. I have that one. That was I have that one, and I have the erasable one. But I still like, because okay. you got me hooked on fountain pens at BACT meetings. I like using the paper one, too. I write and I, I push, keep the paper copy, push everything out digitally to wherever I want it to go so I never lose it. Even if you lose paper, oh, awesome. you still have the digital copy. Now, I'm quick down because I did a bad job of pre, pre-gaming here and making sure I had the app downloaded. I was trying to clean up some storage the other day. So the Rocketbook, Rocketbook app, let's see if we can get that without a glare. Goes through, gives you a little intro. And then that's that's really big for what Dom said. The um, the friction pens are what you would use on the regular, the newer um, Rocket Books. And if you have the paper, you can use whatever. And then once you once you log in here, then they would give you those same icons, and you would just tell it where you want it to go, and you mm -hmm. set it all up ahead of time. And it's awesome. I've even you know jumping into the tech note side. I've even used this in my classroom where I have the paper copy sitting and I have a, a big copy sitting on a table and the kids would be doing work on a paper. I shrunk down with the copiers and they would set it over top and I have an iPad station where they would just click the button and it would take all the pictures. And when the class was done, there's 30 pictures taken. I walk over, I hit the button and boom, it kicks it to drive, kicks it to one note, wherever I need to be able to grade it later. And then I'm sitting at home and I'm like, oh yeah. Was, you know, my students did a collaborative activity. I want to go through and check their papers. And boop, 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 boop. So, you know, you can. it's got multiple applications, but we're thinking, you know, people like writing things down. And there's so much research now between pen and memory. Yes. And when I take that time to write it down, that um, I'm able to remember what was said, what was I, you know, writing. Um, and, you know, and there's, there's just a thing that, you know, let's keep. Let's keep the, the pen going. Let's not just uh, make it all typing. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to steal that idea. I like that idea because I still have a lot of kids that write. I print up the free paper. They yeah. give you on Rocketbook, if you look, they give you free templates to use. And I have students, they get enrichment points in my class for writing notes for the class. Then I scan them and I put them up into Schoology. So students who are absent in this time of year, even pre-pandemic, I had a lot of kids out for various reasons with illness and such. They can get the notes from class, get, you know, everything down. They have a visual copy, and they can print it up, if, print, print it off if needed. So I have the students using that. Let them take the notes. But uh, Rocketbook's a great tool. And then I might as well share GetRocketbook.com is the website. And when you're in here, they do have, uh, they do have some people specializing in just things for educators, um, discounts even. You know, but walking through your different items. Of course, they have a blog, and I'm trying to on the fly remember here where we find the PDFs. If you scroll to the bottom, all the way to the bottom. See, all I, the way to the bottom. There. The, 
Oh, they even have Google Classroom connected with it now. That's new. Yes. That's a new feature. You scroll all the way down to the bottom. That's where I always go. Ah, free PDF pages. There yes. it is. And uh, I've got a couple of people on Facebook saying hi, Gloria. Cherney said hi. Gina Liguori, she's from Southwest. She's English and history. Let's throw her tip up here. She has her students handwrite literary terms. So they remember the definitions better than typing or copying and pasting them. Gina is a KTI rock star. That's awesome. That's a great tip. Thank you so much, Gina. That's huge. Very good. All right, Dom, back to you. So I, I took us way off course with the rocket book. We, we took our ship up okay. to the moon. Now we got to come back. It's not even, it, it's past four o'clock. We're allowed to go off on tangents. <laughs> uh, um, Linda's not here to talk to yell at us. All right, here we go. Um, I always, I take notes um, straight into Google Docs because I have to write up a report anytime I go to a conference. So to save time, and my handwriting's bad, so they don't like seeing my handwritten reports. I have to type everything. <laughs> um, and, and Rocketbook, even though it will transcribe over into from handwriting to typing, it doesn't take my Klingon writing and put it in English. So I type right into Google Docs. Um, okay. It's it's old school tech, but as I'm typing, I put the links because whenever I like to play, whenever I go to, to into a session, and when they're talking about things, I'll be playing, I'll be copying and pasting, I'll throw the the um, URL from, and a lot of people want you to play when you go into their presentations. You go into their session, they want you to participate, not just sit there and listen, but they want you to play with things. And so you can ask questions about what they're talking about, and you're on topic and see how things go. So I put all those links in. I put different ideas in, kind of a, a stream of consciousness in my report. So I run Google Docs, and then on the flip side, I run Twitter, because I'm checking out to see what other people are doing. And um, I used to use an aggregator. I forget the name of it, but it's no longer free, so I don't use it. That would grab all my tweets and put them into, um, I'd print it up, and that would be my report. So now I, I follow stuff on Twitter in the background, but I type into Google Docs to get my report going ahead of time. There's a lot goes on. Yeah. No, it is. It's big. There's, there are, there is so much, and you want to make sure you're staying on top of everything. Yeah, that's a good that's a good one. So, you know, going back to my old school, or, uh, you know, I talked about the old school. Now let's go to the new school thought I have. Um, the first ever, first ever PNC I went to, I was a big Evernote fan. And um, so I had the app Evernote on my phone. I had it on my computer so I can kind of sync in between. And that's, that's a great app. And that does a really good job. They actually have a business card catcher that, you know, when you're doing, when you're at the different vendors' places, they're always scanning your ID badge that you have on. And so, you know, you might ask for their car to just go scan real quick and go. Um, you know, another thing you can do is just, if you get a handful of those cards, you can put them all on top of your, uh, Janice, is, Janice is jumping in with something I was going to talk to you about. So nice. let's go ahead and jump in there. Uh, Wakelet is a huge, huge time saver. We use it for KTI chat. So you can actually set it up to pull the different information from your Twitter feed and then automatically save it for you so you can go check it later. I will be using that. Thank you, Janice. That is awesome. Janice out of Southeast and an MIE expert, if I might ask, a Microsoft Innovative Educator. And it's almost like, you know, Wakelet and Microsoft are just kind of like hand in hand. Um, so, you know, I would use Evernote, do my notes, and then all of a sudden I found this new thing, speaking of Microsoft, but um, one of the things that I really – enjoy using so let me go ahead and work on sharing this one just gonna pull it up here i gotta take off the other window i had all right so we call it the purple passion all those people who love a uh, a little bit of some microsoft so microsoft OneNote. love using OneNote. i'm a big fan um i use it in class i use it for lesson planning i use it when i'm at different events uh, and one of the great things about it is not only can I can type my notes inside of it, I'm in auto, you know, obviously my live on air typing is phenomenal. It's just as good as my text, my texting, my daughter's love when I'm texting, I can't get anything right. Uh, but it's also uh, pen. 
So it has that typing aspect. And then what we said, even how Gina was backing up our thoughts of like, you know, pen, getting it to your memory. I love inking on it and taking notes. Um, and then I can kind of be one of those people they joke about with the iPads that are taking pictures in. But what I like doing is because one note's on my computer, because one note's on my phone, I can have the one note uh, notebook open on my phone, snap the picture, and it puts it on my phone. And within seconds, it syncs up and it's on my computer. And then I'm able to write on the slides. Um, heck, I even use it Sunday morning at church and I'm taking a picture of the slide and I'm taking notes on what's being said. So it's a phenomenal tool. If you've never delved into um, OneNote, you know, it's something to check into. It's awesome. And then you can ink on your phone. Uh, I have some Surface devices that, uh, whether it be a Surface Book or a Surface Pro, that I can ink on the screen in my lap. So I love using it. And the other really cool feature is you can screen grab right into it. So once the website kind of fills out exactly with our schedule, they're still working on getting things done so they don't have everything all listed, then you'll be able to go in and, and be able to pull that copy off and put that into OneNote and make notes about different things where you want to go. So I, I, I'm a big OneNote fan, actually. You see that, little, see that little purple back there? That's a OneNote cape I have, a OneNote Adventure cape. So I really do love using OneNote since 2015. Big fan. That, that is a cool. That is one tool I, I've dabbled with, but I have not gotten all the way into, but I need to follow up with that some more. Um, because that answers the question Gina asked about, are you writing on your phone or do you have a writing pad? But with your Surface device, I'm actually, you write. Yeah, and I'm doing both because I'm, I'm one of those geeks that's, uh, I use the Galaxy Note. So I've got inking on my phone and inking on the computer. So, um, but I love using it, but it works on an iPad, works on, you know, Android yeah. tablets. Um, and there's even a feature uh, at school. We have a Dell with a touch screen, so it doesn't come with a pen, uh, but OneNote recognizes it. You can actually click it. It'll say draw with finger, and you can actually do that with your, your finger as well if you wanted to. may not be as good at a conference, but just something that you're able to do. So, yeah. I, I have to say I'm jealous. I have to work on my penmanship because that's the one thing I have. I have the iPad with the Apple Pencil, but the penmanship just isn't there to utilize that. So I'll, I do the – you know, the rocket book paper with the fountain pen. Because yep. for some reason, that, my yeah. sloppy writing looks more artistic with the fountain pen than it does with a regular ballpoint pen. You're, you're very creative because you have that, the squiggle. Yes. It makes you more Look, creative. I call it calligraphy. <laughs> <laughs> That's where. <word. laughs> All right, what do you got next on your list? Um, from there, the app that they usually have for Pete and C, I believe they're going to they're going to have it again this year. Yep. Great point. Free, download the free app. Exactly. Like you were saying with the book, I remember, you know, old school folding pages. Because if you put post-it notes in the pages, they'd fall off, put them in and out of your backpack. That's another old school tech backpack or something to carry your stuff with. With, But, uh, yep. so, so yeah, when you open up the app right now, don't worry. This says no available shows. Please try again later. So, they are um, working on that in the back end, and you're, you're either going to get uh, prompted for an update or you get prompted to just re-download kind of a newer version of the app. So it might roll through updates. It may just be a newer version. But they've – I don't believe – did they – in Pittsburgh. I wasn't in Pittsburgh, although Flat Verno was uh, in, in a poster board style. Um, but did they, they didn't have the, the books at all. The scheduling no. books and the whole program the book, it's all digital now, right? Yes. So whether you go to the pnc.org forward slash schedule, or if you have the app on your phone to be able to check it, um, I you know one of the big things too is whatever uh, browser you're using, bookmark the PNC schedule site because yeah. you know even though you could type it, there's always times where you might be on walking talking with somebody, and you want to just quickly just kind of tap it, hit it. Um, Oh, Gina, she's in the know. She's in the know. She's got a picture with Flat Verno. Yes. There were a lot of pictures of Flat Verno flying around. I think I could have uh, he was, won a contest of Mayor of Pittsburgh uh, on that week. He was very popular <laughs> at that conference. <laughs> this year, it won't be so. It won't be so flat. There'll be the uh, the, the real beard will be in Hershey. Um, it, but yeah, so with, the PTC app's gonna be where you want to go. Yeah. And with the bookmarking the website, they do have. They're strict about. The seating numbers and that's even without the pandemic 
they have uh, room restrictions, fire codes they have to meet. So if you get to your session and it's booked, you don't want to be sitting there trying to leave through. I've been in that position. You're trying to find what can I go to instead? Where can I go? Where was that session? If you have a bookmarked on a tablet, on your phone, if you don't have the app, laptop, whatever, hit the button. You're right there. And you can see where you need to go and get to that session. And that's the nice thing with with Pete. People don't mind if you move about if you need to. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I definitely want to make sure you, you know, you pre-click to register for different, you know, different um, rooms that might need that. But, yeah, if you're you're in there and, and maybe you thought it was going to be something different, you know, and, and, you know, don't be rude about it. But if you move to another location, that's fine. Yeah. Um, now, another... A uh, really cool thing to highlight. Let me get back to the schedule here on the website. All right, so let me go ahead and share my screen again. You think I would just uh, yep. the keynotes get up are there once and be good? Eight a.m. to nine fifteen on Monday, Wednesday. It is the closing, eleven forty-five to two. That is the closing keynote and usually the luncheon. Monday's keynote is also, it is from 8 to 10. Yep. So, you know, you have time in the morning, but I know for, you know, they, the keynotes get packed. You're in the, uh, the big hall. It's a chocolate ballroom in the lodge. And from there, you have 15 minutes to get to your next session. But you have a large group of people all trying to get to a session. So it's good to have several sessions in mind just in case, you know, you, you're not first in line. You get to a place and it's already packed. Have a couple alternate sessions mapped out. Yeah. Either on your phone, on the website, in your head, where, where do you want to go? Yeah, and even if if you've done a good job in the morning of kind of like preloading where you want to go, as you're walking to the keynote, as you're walking to other places, you might be like, oh, that's where Coco is. Or, oh, yeah. okay, that's where that room is, you know. So um, definitely. So in our two two episodes ago, when we had Ben Smith on, our, our uh, vice president, soon to be president of PACT, um, and also working as one of the, the co-program chairs this year for PTC, he talked about a lot of the different events, and I, I made a comment that I just love how forward-thinking um, Pete and C, PAECT, uh, PASBO, PAMES, all the different organizations have been with thinking about um, the types of offerings we have. And really, you know, it boils down to a lot of the teachers that they've, they're writing the different proposals in such a way. But what's really cool is the fact that eSports has really made a presence this year. And so there's a whole section, if that interests you, uh, kicking off on Tuesday, there's different pathways, eSports at Harrisburg University. I know I have a, a former student of mine who is attending the university. They're actually on an eSports scholarship. So how times have changed, um, collegiate eSports, eSport careers. So I just love the fact that eSports experience at PNC. So I just love the fact that we are embracing that. We are um you know, going to have several options or opportunities for you to be able to network with people who are doing it, thinking about doing it. You know, how can you pull it into your district, your school, and even elements of it into your classroom. So again, I just, I really do appreciate how they're thinking. And I guess it is, um, as I pulled this up, Dom, it made me think of the face-to-face the -face and the virtual. Yeah. Kind of important that we do say that there are face-to-face -face programs, and we do have items that uh, different programs that will be virtual. So you do have the option, depending on where you're at and what you would like right. to do. Not all sessions are going to be virtual, but there will be virtual sessions. That's important to state. Can you scroll down a second real quick? Because on the last page, there are the organizations. There are the four organizations, if you can scroll back up. Oh, yeah. PAECT, we're one of the, woo, four. Got to go four horsemen. Got to give the woo. <laughs> Rick Flair woo. PAIU, uh, PAMES, and... PDE, I believe I can't see. Yep. PDE and PASBO. Yep. PDE and PASBO. Yep. So, yeah, they're the, the, the founding uh, organizations with the program and uh, uh, delightful. And again, February 6th through 9th, 
hopefully you're able to make it in some capacity. And if you're not able to make it, again, you can catch some of those virtual sessions. Uh, they're always great, what they do. You have to be registered to catch the virtual sessions. Yes. So that, that is the one thing. But the Sunday uh, KTI pre-conference, the PACT meet and greet, you don't need to be registered for those. And you do if you're going to the PACT dinner on Monday, you must buy a ticket separate. So even if you're presenting and you have free registration, you have to pay for the dinner. That is extra. So there's a lot going on. It's, it's packing a week's worth of events into three days, maybe four. And I think one of the, you know, it took me a while uh, to figure out this tip. And a lot of times, you know, you, you may only get one day at Pete and C, depending on how your district works. You might get two days. If you are fortunate enough to get that, the, the third official day, not including Sunday, if, you, if you're able to stay for Wednesday, there are some really awesome lunch keynotes. And it, it's a cool experience. You're sitting around the table with friends, people you've just met, people you've known. You're having lunch, you know, breaking bread. And you get to hear some really cool, inspiring stories. You know, I'll never forget one one of uh, my many roles at school is I, I work with our first Lego League uh, group, and we just finished our season out. And it's a cool program, but we got to hear from a gentleman who they actually made a movie about uh, with his group. Now they do Lego robotics there now, but what they were doing was the higher level, and they were going up against MIT and some bigger programs. And he was working in a, a school district in, I believe it was Southern California. And um, I wish I, you know, I'll have to find it and tweet out the, the name of the movie and what it was. It was a couple years ago. And what an inspiring story. And I'm like, if I would not have stayed for Wednesday, you know, if I would have shot out of town because I want to get home. And I, and I get that. I'm not, you know, definitely not throwing, you know, any hate at anybody who has to. You know, if you got to drive to the other side of the state, I'm fortunate that I'm just 45 minutes away. But if you, if you have that uh, capability, if you are afforded that chance to stay there for that Wednesday keynote, um, the impact it has is, is really amazing. Um, and again, as Ann shared, you know, whoop, happy birthday, Ann. As Ann shared uh, two weeks ago, two or two months ago, two pods ago, you know, and she talked about, she was telling us about the different keynotes. There, There is really a lot of thought that goes into picking the keynotes and positioning them the way they do. So it's really cool. And I even forget, I wish I wrote down the words that Ben said as far as how the days are going to go. So there really is a lot of stuff yeah. that does go into the back end of setting up your program, setting up the schedule. So it's really cool. It's you can definitely... know, we don't have the words, but you can go back in past episodes and check it out. It was what he said. There is a rhyme and reason to how they have the keynotes set up. And I enjoy staying through the keynotes a couple times because of weather or um, family health issues. I've had to leave a little bit early and not stay through the keynote. And I've missed some very good keynotes. But the keynotes are excellent. Every year I've been there, um, informative, motivational, I guess it would be the word uh, to use. But we have some excellent keynotes. And it, it's, it's worth staying um, on that Wednesday. We give you a lunch and some excellent words of wisdom. And uh, I believe Janice was there for the keynote that was talking about the robotics program and, and what they were doing. And, yeah, it really was. It kind of, you know, there's been a, a couple times, you know, the beard's been teared up a little bit on Wednesdays with the, the yeah. closing keynote. So it's pretty cool. It's a neat experience. There's a lot of great people doing a lot of great things. Oh, no. man. She, listen, Janice is a rock star today. Yes. The movie was called Spare Parts. Um, yeah, definitely. If, you, if you've not seen it, definitely a cool movie to check out. Awesome. Thank you, Janice. Man, you know what? We did get some uh, we we did get some uh, swag from uh, from Goose Chase. I may have to bring uh, bring some uh, uh, maybe a highlighter or something. I'll talk to you, Janice offline for for you know throwing out some different information. I think maybe Gina. We might have to catch Gina. Yeah. She'll have to find one of us to get the uh, the Goose Chase swag, Gina. So hopefully you're still on and listening. If not, yeah. somebody will let you know. I want to thank Goose Chase for that. Um, my students appreciate it. They're big. They've, they've been asking, like, over Christmas or winter break, they're like, can we do a Goose Chase again? And, you know, they just, it gives us something to do, gives, keeps them active, and 
they enjoy it. So kids really appreciate that going on. Gina's fired Gina up to get some. It. She's fired up. Yes. <laughs> hey, another thing to add, Dom, is we're looking at this uh, Act 48. Yes. I think every year we always get a lot of questions about Act 48. So, um, but it is good to know here that Act 48 is available. You get up to 15 hours for your three day, up to 11 hours if you're just there for a uh, two day. Um, but if it's Tuesday, Wednesday, because Wednesday's shorter, they only have it as nine hours for that, and up to five for Monday, six for Tuesday, uh, three for Wednesday. So um, this does involve you filling out information about the sessions you were at. So it's definitely you know worth your while if you're going to be there. You might as well get those hours. But it does take a little bit of you just remembering. I, I think I think you have some time. They had the window open uh, shortly after the conference, but I don't know the exact number. When we get it, we'll tweet it out. But um, you definitely want to be able to take advantage of getting those Act 48 hours. Yes. And, and what they do with, at the end of the sessions, they give you the code. That I, I believe that's how they're still going to do it. At the end of the session, they give you the code for Act 48 and, and where to, you know, where to go and, and sign up to fill out the information. So, you know, it, it's well worth it. You're there. You're, you're learning. Great professional development experience. And speaking of some kind of PD and field trips, speaking of goose chase, Gina said they use goose chase during their field trip to the Heinz History Center. Very awesome. Love the goose chase app. Yeah. We went to, the only time I was at the Heinz History Center, and I live in Pittsburgh, I'm a history teacher, um, was at PACT, or not PACT, PNC 2020. Huh? We had our, uh, the one night was at the History Center, check things out. Okay. I think I may have been there. Paper copy. Yep. <laughs> Platt Verno was there. Oh, Janice, man. have a good evening. She's going off to the regional board meeting. All right. For well, Southeast. I, yeah. Yeah. The Southeast is meeting up to talk about what's coming up. That's awesome. So definitely. Um, and I, you know, as we were talking too, we talked about the, the regional directors holding uh, get togethers in the morning. And I believe those are going to be timed up prior to the keynote. So I think they're 7.30 to 8, and then the keynote kicks in at 8 o'clock. So 7.30 on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday morning. Check out. Well, uh, Wednesday morning will be 7.30. The keynote's not till the closing session, so it'll be before the first session. Gotcha. Yep, there you go. Great point, great point. Well, you know, we've talked a lot about Pete and C. Hopefully we've got some people fired up, excited. Hopefully we, you know, people are like, oh, I, I'm going to meet and greet some different PACT members, some board members. Hopefully we've got some people to double check their registration and make sure they're signed up for the Monday night dinner. Yes. We got tips and tricks, ways to uh, survive a tech conference. And I think that's a lot of information for one night. What do you think, Tom? That pretty much wraps everything up. Um, I do have to learn how to connect Wakelet to Twitter. So I can grab those tweets because I usually use TweetDeck to run a couple different streams. But I'm definitely that's something I got to learn before. Pete. Yeah. Now wait, Wakelet's really easy. One, you know, once you get it all set up. I, yeah. Another one we didn't talk about is if this then that. Yeah. You know, if this then that. That's old. That's an old school app. You can set that up to do a lot of things. What I love is uh, in the if this then that app, you can find other triggers, some programs people have made, so you can even. You know, why reinvent the wheel? So yeah. another one that you, if you've not done before, it's one that you could definitely look for. So what, awesome. What to find the uh, Pete and C hashtag. Ooh, great point. That's always good because we, we do run hashtags for that. So it's easy to track through Twitter, through TweetDeck, whatever app you are using. And I apologize for not having that. It's usually yep. um, at Pete. And so it's spelled out. The Twitter handle, yes, yeah, P E T E A N D C at P and C. But yeah, the hashtag this year, I am not sure. So if you follow at P E T E A N D C, they will have the information and they push that out. And that's always a good account to follow along with P A E C T and the regional accounts on Twitter because we will be. Um, retweeting and putting out information for you guys throughout the conference and the run up to the conference. Uh, PACT historian Mark Perlman gave us a shout-out on Facebook. Oh, you man. Doing, Mark? Love that. Love that picture on Facebook there. 
Awesome. And the other thing, too, is uh, bit, B-I-T dot L-Y forward slash all caps P-A-E-C-T and then lowercase E-V-E-N-T-S P-A-C-T events. We have our glide show as our uh, Northwest Regional Director loves to say uh, and the, the, the Adobe Spark Glide Show. Um, and we update that on a monthly basis. The regional directors will sit down. What events are going on? Has, has anything changed? So if you are looking for an event in your area, bit.ly forward slash P-A-C-T events. You capitalize P-A-C-T. Uh, and I don't know if you've, if you've done much with uh, bit.ly, but if you do not have the capitalization right, it could send you to a different page or just not work at all. Yeah. Hey, Mark, the feeling's mutual. Hopefully you'll be at Pete and C. Can't wait to see you, man. I'd love to catch up with you. And uh, stuff. Speak- well, you know. We've gotten a lot of great corporate sponsors. Yeah. We have gold sponsors. We've got venture sponsors. We've got a lot of sponsorships going. So I think it's time to give some credit to our sponsors. If I oh, can't interrupt, more. if I can't interrupt real quick, yeah. we've talked about Keystones. And former Keystone, she is working with the Western Pennsylvania Council of Teachers of English. They're holding mm-hmm. a spring concert at St. Vincent College here in the western sec- southwestern section of the state. They are looking, it's March 30th, they're looking for presenters, people who are willing to put out proposals. Please check your email. We'll be sending out a blast um, either tomorrow or early next week, and I'll be posting this on PACT.org. They're looking for proposals. Those of you who are Keystones or PACT members thinking of doing presentations either at Pete, at Tretzi, which is the regional conference, and some of the other conferences around the state, this is a great way to get started. and. You know, check out your you submit proposals, check out some of these other conferences in the area. So I said I would give a shout out to them because they are looking for people willing to do proposals, ed tech, English, um, along those lines. So check PACT.org for more information. Love it. And before we close out with, uh, you know, making sure uh, pay the bills and, and share some information about our awesome sponsors, the PACT pod, you can catch us the third Thursday of the month. Barring any special holiday, like we, we bumped it a little bit because of Christmas. Um, you can check us out on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash P-A-C-T. Uh, and then if you go to, uh, you can also go to the bit.ly forward slash P-A-E-C-T-P, all capitalized, and then O-D, P-A-C-T pod. Uh, we're on YouTube Live, Facebook Live, or we're, on, we're live on Twitter. Um, and we would love if you would take the opportunity to subscribe which wherever you love listening to your audio podcast, subscribe and listen to the audio version. Share that with your friends. I, I love listening to podcasts between my, my home and work. You know, it may take me three days to get through that podcast, but it's something I look forward to. Um, and just to be able to play, uh, you know, the Teacher Tech Tribe. I don't know if you heard about the Google Teacher Tech Tribe. It was an awesome show. Casey Bell, Matt Miller, they just ended their run. They're doing some different stuff. That was an awesome one to listen to. There's a lot of great knowledge. And you can gain from a multitude of podcasts, whether it be ed tech or just things in the world. Whenever whenever I go for my walks and stuff um, over the summer, and even if I hit the treadmill down here in, in the basement, you know, put a podcast in, sit there and listen, and kind of zone out and do the treadmill or do the walk out in nature. That's why you got that golden shoe for your region. Yes. Huh? <laughs> and by default, we retain it. We don't want it anyway. Ah, uh, we didn't get okay. All right, we got to work. Bring, on that. We'll bring back the race of the regions next year. That's it. To be to be continued in the future. All right. Well, thank you to our sponsors. Here we go.
All right. Well, it's been a while since we've done the closing, but we truly appreciate you being here. We appreciate those who've uh, shared comments and shared their thoughts. And PACT truly enjoys being the voice of EdTech in Pennsylvania and beyond. Have a lovely rest of your evening, rest of your week, and hopefully we'll see you in February at Pete and C 2022. Take care, everybody. Have a great night. Take care.